Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and um, I would like to take a look at starting Revit from scratch out of the box as installed. Um, I've got many questions about this asked a lot and this is a quick 10 minute uh, overview of how to get started in Revit. When the interface starts up you can either look at your projects or families. What you want to do is click on the R button and start a new project. When you start a new project you'll be prompted for a template. Um, I have my own default templates created in here which you can see but I'm just going to use the one out of the box. So if you're a metric user um, I'd recommend that you probably use the default GBR ENU or the default metric. So I'm going to use the GBR I'm going to hit OK and it's going to start up my new project, my new RVT file based on the template. On the left hand side we have a project browser so say if I click on level 0 that takes me in to my levels but how do I actually define my levels well if I look in my elevations I'll automatically have an east a north a south and a west view I can go to any one of those views I can see the levels and I can simply click and click again to actually change the name so I could say that is ground floor do I want to rename the corresponding views? I'm going to say yes, because what will happen, the floor plans will be renamed up here. Again, level 1, click, rename, first floor. It'll be renamed, yep, corresponding views, floor plans changed, and I might change the height, say to 2800 and hit enter. What happens if I want a new level in? Very, very simply, we've got level option up here, so we're on the ribbon. So I click on my level and I've got various options. I can actually just draw a level. So when you see if I click from point to point it will take it to level 2 and it will add my level in. Which again I can click and change the name. I can say look this is wall plate and rename the corresponding view and it will update. I can hit escape and quit out of it. So I've got my three levels in here. I can also add levels in by offsetting, but I'm not going to do that. So let's go back in and have a look at the ground floor. This is where my actual views, east, north, west um, and south, are actually looking at. If I need to drag that back, I can simply drag the marker back. But the key area we want to get started is drawing the basics, which is a wall. So if I click on the wall, I'll see my walls. Now where this information comes from, these are system families, so they're built in to the template. So because I've used a metric template in here, I've got some standard curtain walls in here, I've got some standard cavity walls. When I click the wall, I've got an option to actually specify the height. Because we've changed their levels, I could say, well, let's tie this in to the first floor. I've got an option as well on my lock line. Am I working to the center line? Am I working to the core face center? Maybe I'm working to the exterior, which would be common. Do I want my lines chained? So that means that my walls are going to keep adding on as a chain. So I can simply use the draw tools up here. Maybe I want to draw a rectangular area, some walls, so I can pick from point to point. The nice thing about the walls is you get these witness lines. So you can simply click on and change. I could say make that 20 meters. I can click on this one here and say make that 12 meters. If I hit escape and escape it quits out of it, you can see the temporary dimensions disappear. At any stage I can go back in, so unlike um, AutoCAD, AutoCAD has parametric constraints now, but very quickly we can click on the wall and we can see the length of the wall. Now I've got grip edits here so I can simply drag them to the appropriate end and then maybe change the value again. I could say make that 18 meters. Again I could do the same here. I can change my grip ends. I could actually make that permanent dimension on the screen by just simply clicking it. So again I could change my value, say that's 11500. So you're dynamically changing the actual layout here and you'll notice that my permanent dimension's in. It also scaled orientated. You can see the thickness of my line weights in here, but if I change the scale from 1 to 100 to 1 to 50, again you can see the patterns change. Taking this a wee bit further, if I go into my wall again, let's hit wall, I'm going to change say to the likes of my internal walls, I'm maybe going to pick the likes of a block wall. I'll start splitting this building up, you can see 
by snaps you're actually coming into place. And a common thing about Revit is you could sketch the outline of the building or the interior and you could worry about the dimensions later on because they are very, very easy to change. So what I mean by that is if I click on the wall, again you'll see my witness line come in where I can actually change my dimension values. Okay, what happens if we had a fillet on an actual wall? Well, we could go to our wall. We could use our tools in here, so we've got various options. So we can say, well, look, let's actually create a fillet arc. We could specify the radius in here and say the radius needs to be one meter. Again, we can pick the walls and I'll add that radius in. And if I cancel out and actually pick that wall, again, I can change the value later on. So that's looking at the wall elements in there. Everything is coming in 3D. So if I go to my 3D view, you'll see my components. Now everything's in the same file. So if we go to view, a common thing to do in Revit is you'll actually tile all your windows. Now it can seem rather overwhelming if you're a new user, but all you simply do is maximize the screen again and close your hidden windows. So if I double click on my ground floor and go to tile, I simply have my two views. And this is a way most uh, common uh, to Revit users. So let's add in some quick doors. So again, we can go to the Home tab, go to Door, and we can pick our family from the library. So I can set my standard door and bring it in. I can hit the space bar to flip the direction and bring my door in. Again, hit the space bar. The nice feature of Revit is adding constraints in. If I pick and make that a permanent dimension, I can actually click the dimension again and use the lock symbol. And what this simply does is constrains the physical door to the wall. So it will always remain 400 mil from the actual corner. Let's add a couple of windows in. So let's look at the window elements. Again, we can look at the components. If there's not the necessary components that we need in the actual template, we can load it from the library. It'll take you directly to where you need to go. You simply go into your windows and pick the actual comp window component you need from the library. So you can scroll down and find all your standard windows that you actually need. Revit's very adapt adaptive. You can actually create your own styles of windows. So I'm going to scroll back down here. I'm going to take my standard um, horizontal bar. Pick the one that I want to load and bring it in. So the components loaded, I can simply click on the wall to actually attach my window. Because we're building these physical components up now, um, I can look at other individual areas, like of adding in a floor slab. So I can go in, look at my floor, and actually use this by picking walls. So I can say, well, look, I actually need my floor slab along here. I could have done this earlier on in my project. I could finish my floor out. That's my floor added in. So that's a very quick overview of getting started in Revit. What you want to do is start on your metric or imperial template. You want to change your levels that are adapted to your project. And then you start adding in the walls and actual door components. Thanks for your time.